Hello fellow Fandersons. I think that's the correct collective noun for what we are. My name is Andrew Nobbins and this is walkthrough number 10 of my virtual reality project featuring the sets from Space 1999. As I've mentioned in the past, you can download this PC VR experience from the homepage on itch.io and the download instructions are in the notes below the video. So for this update, I have included an alternate version of the Eagle passenger pod that I first introduced in the previous version. And this one is the one that includes the X5 computer wall, as you can see here on the right. Um, having a quick look at the menu system, you can see previously I had five scenes, and now I have included this extra sixth scene called Eagle X5 computer pod, um, which is a, a direct alternate version to this scene here, the, the passenger pod scene. So let's just have a quick tour through this space. So if we go here to the center, you can see here this uh, side exit door is closed in this version, um, as opposed to the passenger pod scene where this door is open. Uh, and then beyond this door, you could see the uh, airlock and then the travel tube uh, further on. Here in the rear, I've chosen to open the door, um, exposing the uh, storage room beyond. And you can see hints of that storage room in some of these screenshots, which I will go through a little bit later on. So let's just move on down through here. Um, all of this luggage is pretty much unchanged to what I did in the passenger pod, uh, along with these props here in, on these shelves. Um, but the new addition would be some of these props here in this little alcove before we enter the uh, Eagle cockpit through door number six. So this signage is new to this scene. Um, this signage also is slightly different to the previous scene. In the previous scene, there's an orange label here rather than this uh, red and black one. But let's have a closer look at these two props here. The, um, the fire extinguisher that you see there and there is, I think, pretty accurate to the show. Um, but there are two versions of it. So this version is the one that has the uh, red, blue, and white label. There is a slightly different version of this in the standard Eagle passenger pod scene. And when we get into there, I'll, I'll point out the differences. Um, this object here was a little bit of a mystery to me. I think I did a pretty close job of modeling it, but I have no idea what it is. Um, I nominally called it a battery in, in my computer files, but I would love to learn if somebody has a better idea what that might be. If you could leave the, your comments in the below the YouTube video, that would be great. But let's just have a closer look at it if we can. I mean, if, if not a battery, it could be a um, some sort of light torch, you know, with the on off switch up there. Uh, so so the, the, the light would have to be on this rear face here. Um, I mean, th this is looks black here because it's the lighting is just a little bit dodgy the way it's done here in, in Unity. But um, I, I've modeled two electrical outlets, um, but it could, it could well just be a, a big LED light or something back there. Well, not LED in the 1970s, but uh, in the context of the TV show. So... This door, door number six, is the entrance to the cockpit. Now, I had hoped originally, naively, <laughs> thought that I would model this new set along with the actual cockpit of the Eagle. But it's, it's been taking me too long to model the Eagle cockpit, so I chose to do this update as it is now, just this interior space without the cockpit, and upload... Uh, the new version sooner rather than waiting for me to finish the cockpit. If I stick my head through here, you can see that there I've got nothing. There's nothing beyond here at the moment. If, if we look, if we look down onto the um, whole model, that's what you see. Let me just teleport back down there. So, um, so this is the corridor leading up to the cockpit. Let's go back here and have a closer look at some of these details. Now, this door has this steel 
bracket here with these carabiners attached to it. And there are a few shots in the TV show where various astronauts are doing spacewalks out through this uh, door. And, and they're pretty much attached to the eagle with this uh, orange uh, rope. And the rope is attached to these carabiners. So this bracket in some scenes is visible above this door and then also above that door. And so if we just have a quick look at the carabiners. Again, this stuff was all so blurry. It's hard to model it exactly as it might have been in the TV show. But um, I've got the rough size modeled correctly, I think. Uh, and, and particularly for this bracket thing. One of the other differences is that this X5 computer wall version of the passenger pod includes is um, it has these new door control buttons, uh, which the previous set didn't have. So that's what we've got there. That's unchanged to what I had previously. Um, same over here on this wall here. Now, so we often see these uh, stun guns kind of arrayed on this uh, steel bar here. Uh, and then with these sort of um, perspex spaces it's kind of difficult to model that in VR actually and make it look like perspex spaces, but um, it came out okay. And that's how they, I mean, I imagine this would have been quite difficult to actually, I think this is kind of impractical really, but um, they would have had to twist the stun gun to, to, to slot it in and then turn it and then place it in into the thing. I had hoped to also model the laser rifle that sits on, on this bracket. As it turns out, I mean, I haven't done a lot of research on the laser rifles, but I think there's at least two or three different versions. And I just couldn't find decent photographs of any of them for me to even attempt to model it with any accuracy. So for now, I've chosen not to model the laser rifle. And... Um, Maybe I'll come across some decent information at some point and, and I'll put it in. So that's different to the previous one. The signage um, placement is different to the previous uh, passenger pod. And then also this monitor configuration is different. Here we have these two CRT screens with a whole bunch of buttons and, and you know, letter set labels as is so common in Space 1999. I mean, here we go ABC, and then we continue with PQR over there. Um, and if you remember, the um, the standard passenger pod just has a simple rear projected screen that uh, in in the place of all of this complexity. So that is different. Um, these green, yellow, and blue lidded containers. Um, I think I saw them in one scene, and so they looked interesting enough for me to add them here, rather than just have some repetition of, of whatever I had previously. And then there were quite a few scenes where we had these sort of, kind of like, you know, Tupperware containers sitting in, in, in those locations. And some of the Tupperware containers had a label on them, um, but uh, others didn't at all. So I didn't bother putting the, that Letraset label on these ones. But if we have a closer look, you can see how they turned out. So there's just two sizes, that one and that one. That down there is the same as before. Over here, uh, obviously the fire extinguisher is the same as before, but this object here, I think this is actually a container for various knickknacks, and typically it would be upside down and, and you could possibly stack them and then have access to the contents through this uh, little opening here. So I think they just reappropriated those containers, turned them upside down, put some labels on them and made them look like something that they're not. 
for the TV show. It's all suspension of disbelief. So now the computer wall. Um, the computer wall has this return here with these uh, shelves built in and that label. Um, but it also has that air vent, which you see there. But the interesting thing is that air vent isn't always in that position. There's plenty of shots where there is no air vent in that location. So again, it's kind of pick and choose which scene, which episode you want to model. Um, so these are the same containers that I've used elsewhere. The same salad bowls, the same um, hamper pack. Um, as as has been used elsewhere, and and these are the hamper packs that we see in this scene. Now, in the uh, passenger pod scene, I did have these hamper packs present in that scene, but they really didn't belong there. They belonged here in this one, in this episode, uh, in this, these later episodes of season one, not in that earlier representation of the passenger pod. So, um, so now onto these computer panels. Now, one of the things that made my life a little bit easier for, in modeling this was the fact that all of these computer panels, are, well, not all of them, most of them are taken from the main mission computer wall. So I could just copy all that geometry into here. Um, although sometimes uh, the panels were turned upside down compared to how they are in main mission. So this is an example where in main mission, it's, it's actually upside down. Um, but these panels, I pre yeah, I, I, I just pretty much stole from the main mission set, with the exception of this panel, and then obviously these two computer screen panels. So this panel is a new one for this set, and I think I got pretty close to how it looked. And then we have this large, you know, quadruple size panel uh, containing the large CRT monitor in the center and the two small ones on the side with a whole bunch of, well, with speakers. Well, I don't know if, if they're supposed to be speakers, but, well, yeah, I guess that's what they are. Uh, and then with various lights. Um, some of this labeling was impossible to make out. It was very blurry, but kind of roughly like that. The lettering that you see here, I think I've got that pretty accurately done, along with the stuff across the bottom and then stuff there. The ubiquitous uh, Letraset stuff. And also there's, there's a bit of Letraset up here as well. Um, so... I think that's that. Now, in terms of the specific layout of all these panels, there was no one scene ever that had this specific layout. But what, so what I did was I, I mean, some of the scenes would have an interesting panel here and there, and then it would be these really plain panels across the top or, or really plain panels across the bottom. Um, so I, I kind of mixed and matched the most interesting panels and left out the really plain ones. But then also I left out the fact that I think in some scenes, like this panel might have been over here where the desk is, um, but I really wanted to push the desk as close to the wall as possible so that it wouldn't intrude into the corridor. Um, so I didn't, I specifically didn't want to have this sort of panel there, um, which would then require the whole desk to be pushed further out. So the these panels, uh, as I said, were, were all taken from the main mission set. And I might as well at this point go to main mission just, just to refresh everyone's memory about those panels. So if we go to main mission, here we are. And so you can see a lot of these same panels over here, you have the green graph screens and the illuminated squares and the you know these handle 
thingies and so on. So all of that stuff was definitely taken from this wall or that wall. And in fact, the computer screens, you know, this is the same size computer screen and that's the same size computer screen as we see in the other set. Now, before I leave this set, and I just realized I'm doing it again. I'm moving my head too quickly for you guys, so I, I do apologize. There's no point promising that I will never do it again because I will, I will forget in 30 seconds time. So sorry about that. Um, okay, let's just go and have a look at some changes that I did to this set since the previous update. One of them was a um, the Catacombs website is just such a treasure trove of information and Martin Wiley um, is the guy that uh, manages that website and we've been emailing each other and he's supplied me with um, a lot of really nice reference material. And one of the things was um, some better close-up photos of what was actually happening here. I mean, this logo here was still quite blurry, but what I have here is, is I think, a little bit closer to what that photo showed. It's still not, it's guaranteed not to be accurate because it was very blurry, but, but it's better. And I think I've got a, a more accurate font as well to what was shown in that photo. Um, there was an issue about how the spelling of this uh, Vita seed, I think it's either V-I-T-A or V-E-T-A. Um, and in fact, we see both spellings in the TV show, strangely enough. So that was the change there. Um, the other change that I did was if you look at the um, pilot episode when Commander Koenig arrives via the Eagle and then Victor Bergman, Bergman meets him in the travel tube and they come down here and enter the main mission and they both come in here. And during that whole scene, um, Martin Lando is carrying this white briefcase with him and he sort of comes in, you know, these doors close and he places the briefcase here on, the, on this desk and it pretty much stays there for the rest of the episode. So... In the previous update, I had uh, one of those red, I had one of these red clipboards sitting on the table here in the corner, but I removed that and put the um, briefcase here as was done in the pilot episode. And then, so previously there was a red clipboard here. I, I just replaced that with the white, just so that we had the white version here, which includes the plan of main mission and Commander Koenig's office. And then the red one includes the plan and elevations and isometric of the Eagle transporter. So I think that was, yes, that's all the changes that I did to main mission since last time. It's all pretty minor stuff. Um, and then if we have a look at the Eagle passenger pod scene itself, uh, so here we see the uh, seating on the on the right and the seating on the left. We see the door in the closed position. And previously, you you were able to teleport through this door into the into the um, storage room, but now I've removed that storage room entirely. If you, you notice here, I've got my head through the wall. You can see the storage room is gone, uh, and that's because there's no point having it here because I've got it in the other scene. Um, and then as you can see here, the side door is open. As I mentioned, you know, the previous one is closed. And then here we have our airlock with everything pretty much the same as before. And then here in the travel tube, there is another, another subtle change, which nobody will ever be able to tell the difference, but um, once again, from the Catacombs website, Martin Wiley, he came across, or he has, some slightly better photos, or, or slightly less blurry photos of this map, which we were able to kind of vaguely, roughly have a better idea of what some of the spaces were called. So I ended up changing my labels, is what I'm getting at. <laughs> So all of these labels have been updated to what we think is a better representation of what 
might have actually been shown in the TV show. I have a feeling some of the labels I have here are probably not correct, but um, these ones here I think are much better than what I had previously. So that includes, so that update updates that and that. So those two textures are the same. This one is kind of the same, but, but different in that it's a much higher texture, but all the labels match to what, what happened over there. So let's just have a quick look at the screen captures. So the screen captures in here are unchanged and, and I haven't added any. But what I did with the screen, these screen captures is since I now have this new X5 computer wall variant of this passenger pod, some of the screen captures actually refer to, to that later version and some of them refer to this earlier version of the passenger pod. So previously I had some additional um, screen captures here um, which really refer to the X5 computer wall. So I've removed them from this scene and now these screen captures only refer to the passenger pod version which you can see here, which includes the two rows of seating. Uh, and likewise here you can see there's seating. Funnily enough, I've just noticed here we see seating and we see that door control. And yet, I've, and yet if we look over here, there is no door control over there. So, I think I was correct in not showing the door control as they have put it there. Um, and then there were, I think there was another screenshot here which really belonged in the, in the other scene. And I think I had another screen capture here which also belonged in the other scene. And so here we are in the corridor and you can see here, clearly there is no um, fire extinguisher attached to this uh, bracket in, in, the, uh, in that little alcove. And so that's what I've continued to show there. But what we do see is the fire extinguisher is here on the floor. And you can see these fire extinguishers have a white or a label with white writing on it. Um, which is very different to the label that we saw in the other scene where it was that red and blue and white colored label. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I did a, a second variant of the fire extinguisher with the white label, and, and you'll see that here in a second. But instead of having them just sitting on the floor, um, which kind of might indicate that this eagle has just gone through a battle of some kind. Um, and, and I did want to remain not showing the fire extinguishers in their brackets, just like it is in this photo. So what I ended up doing was um, placing the extinguishers just here off to the side. And so here you can see the fire extinguisher with a white label sitting there and one sitting here. And the bracket um, sitting on its own. Now you'll notice that this bracket is in fact white Whereas when, when I get back to the X5 computer wall passenger pod, um, that bracket you will see is, is actually dark. So there's two versions of the bracket, two versions of the fire extinguishers in this uh, in space 1999. But other than that, all the labels match. So you know the label on the door is kind of like that. Oh, and look at that. I think, oh, look at that, yes. <laughs> I've just noticed that, in fact, is that upside down um, container thing that I pointed out that in the other scene sits down there. Um, so in this scene, I've also, previously I had this sort of desk tidy because I just had nothing better sitting in this location, but that was just never right. So I've put these Tupperware containers in and these, you know, green, yellow, blue lid containers, just like in the other scene, just because at least that was present in some of the versions of the Eagle passenger pod. Um, I've removed those um, food plate things, the uh, hamper pack food 
trays from here because really in this version of this early version of the passenger pod it was never ever there so that's the passenger pod now let's just go back to the uh, eagle x5 pod um, so if we go to the screenshots now you can see here we have a slightly different combination of screenshots um, which relate to the computer wall. So here you can see the computer wall. Um, this is actually a different version of, and, and in fact, I don't have this one here, um, of that sort of colored, you know, checkered panel thing. Um, actually, <laughs> all of these are different here and, and there's that um, little container thing sitting there with the, the green label on it as you can see there and then the two the hamper pack things that are there but not in the other scene and also this shows the uh, this version of the labels that we see there and there and then we've come over here um again so so this is that colored panel that we see up there uh, and in fact this checker pattern is the checker pattern that i've got over there victor bergman sitting at the desk and you can see if you look closely there's that uh, red clipboard along with the orange coffee cup and we can't really see it but there are other scenes where we see victor bergman's um com lock so that's what I've I've got here. I've got the red clipboard along with the orange coffee cup and Victor Bergman's comlock with a animation running on the screen. And then here we're sort of looking down into the seating. Um, I don't remember if this shot was from a later episode in the season or an earlier one, but either way, the seating is the same. On this left side in both versions of the passenger pod. Now for this passenger pod I also added a new sort of a, what do you call this, a, a test pattern. Um, if I go back to the standard passenger pod you can see I've got an animation running on that um, reprojection screen and that so I've taken a still from that animation and that's what I've put into those two screens. But then over here on the left side, I've got this test pattern, um, which is one of the classic test patterns from the TV show. Um, but I think this test pattern was mostly from uh, the early episodes of season one. Later on in season one and, and then season two, we have, we have that test pattern. So I that's a new addition to my textures and so that's present there 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 and there the animation that you see here is really just a whole bunch of clips from oh man i don't remember which episode it, it is from i'm sure you all probably know better than me but um but these are all just clips from an alien planet that uh, I thought would be cool to show on this screen as though we are on a mission to that alien planet and that's what we're, we're seeing. So that's that. Let's just go back to the screenshots. So I've done those screenshots. I don't think, yes, so there's no screenshots here. Um, so this screenshot shows the door with the door controls in that location um, and then these shelves as I have them there with the label that, that we see that we see there um, now interestingly across here that bar that we have there for which is used for spacewalks is not visible in this screenshot and it's not visible in any of the screenshots actually that i have here but you'll have to trust me 
that bar does exist in, in plenty of scenes. So here we can see, um, well here the, it's using that scotch case instead of what I've got there, but the, again, that's present in some scenes. Um, we've got the five uh, laser stun guns and then our two CRT screen configuration as we have there. Um, in this case, they're both off, but I've got one on, off and one on. Um, and then here is the laser rifle, or one of the laser rifles that we sometimes see in that location. Here the um, bracket is white, whereas I've got it sort of dark grey, because, I mean, there were scenes where it was dark grey. Um, but I'm kind of thinking maybe I should just make it white to suit that. And like I said, one day if I find some decent photos of this, I might model it and put it in that location. Um, now this screenshot looks like it could belong in the passenger pod as well, but there is a difference. Um, this label is, is different this, to, to what is in the passenger pod. So if you can see up there, the, the label is like that. But if, if I go, if I go to, back to the passenger pod, you can see the label above the door looks like that. And in fact, if I if I go to here, you can see the green label as per that. So, yeah, it's all a case of selectively choosing what you want to represent. And so I'm trying to be consistent. I'm trying to, the, the passenger pod is trying to be the early part of season one, and this is trying to be the second part of season one. And then, so here, <laughs> we do not see an, uh, the, the vent like we do on this side, but there, there are plenty of scenes where we do see the vent. And in fact, here we go. There is a vent just there as opposed to one not being there. But anyway, so here we see the computer wall. And, and so this is an example of the different font and gra graphic style that they used on the doors in the later season episodes. Um, whereas I use this style of font and graphics on the door and I must say I, I like the season one graphics better than I like that um, but here here's an example of, of what I was saying before um, you know again they've got that colored panel here whereas I've got it I've got it up there but this is an example again of where they've got some interesting panels across the bottom half and then just some boring panels across the top and across the bottom. So, um, yeah, you'll never see my particular orientation in, in the TV shows. It's just, but you will see at one point that and at another point that and another point that. Anyway, I've gone on a bit too much about that. Once again, totally different configuration of buttons and speakers and so on. And there is no label there either, whereas you can see it there uh totally different um desk as well if you look at that desk and this desk and then if, if we come here this desk is the same desk that is used in in main mission like literally the same desk as in main mission whereas that one if we come here totally different desk different you know instead of metal legs it's got this wooden desk uh, legs Totally different. It's the same case that we have up there. I haven't modeled these cases. I think that's the only place I've ever even seen these cases. Okay, so we can look at this. Not much to say about that. And I include, even though this is really from the earlier seasons, I included in this shot just to show 
because it's the only one I have looking down the corridor. Um, but really, this belongs in the other scene, and it is in, in the other scene with with those uh, versions of the fire extinguishers. And then here we have this shot. So this is the shot that informed me with what was actually going on in here in this later season alcove. So there you can see the blue, red and white label, green fire extinguisher along with the black strap. Oh, and then the dark bracket that I mentioned. So here the bracket is dark and the other scene is white. And then this is that object, whatever it is, whether it's a, a battery or a light or some sort of transformer. Again, if somebody knows, please drop a comment below. Now, I, I've included these, you know, the blue, the yellow, the, that white label, this red one down here. You can see there. Um, I couldn't see what writing was underneath. So I've just done these dots. But that was the very best photo that I had of that label. So... Yeah, you do the best you can. There's another photo where, where I could see this uh, green too. So at some point, I may have a go at modelling these pickaxes and grappling hooks and hammers and you know rope. Um, don't know what that would be. Shovel maybe of some kind. Um, I may have a go at modelling that, but again... It's just so little information about you know, what that is. And yeah, I don't know. At the moment, I'm not motivated to do all that extra stuff. But um, but, but for, for the time being, I've got that. Um, this photo doesn't show those two things, but there are other photos where we see that um, you know, damage control and number one. So that is the screen captures that relate to this new scene. Let's just turn them off. One last look. I don't think there's anything else that I can mention. Uh, maybe there is. I can mention, the, and I've mentioned this in the last walkthrough, the doors that we see. Um, so here, this door, this, this is that central module on the Eagle Transporter, and this, this module detaches from the Eagle Transporter and then another one can, can slot in. And so there's, there's, a, the, there's a bulkhead that has to join. So th this door relates to the passenger pod, and then the second door relates to the corridor and the Eagle itself. So, so it's like a, an airlock. And so clearly you can see in this photo, there are two doors, um, one for the passenger pod and one for the corridor. But, uh, and so, so that's kind of what I've done here as well when I eventually do the, um, the cockpit. There's a door here and then there's going to be a door there. Even though in, in all of the photos of the cockpit, it actually doesn't show two doors. It's, they only show one door. So they show one door and two of these architraves instead of instead of like this photo. Oh, which photo is it? This photo here, which shows three architraves. So three architraves and two doors, which is what I've modeled there. But over here, if I come here, you can see <laughs> they've got one door and only one architrave. Um, but again, this is meant to be an airlocked situation. So it should have been three architraves, two doors, as it is over there. So because I can, I did. I put in three architraves, two doors, just like over there. And just like I'm going to do for the Eagle cockpit. So so that's one difference that I've got happening there. And then, the, and then if you look through the door, you can see those um, square hexagonal containers. So I've got those in place. Um, possibly not the same configuration as in this photo, but um, but that's them there. And then you can see, again, in the distance, the um, air vents, along with the, um, the beige wall and 
Well, it actually looks like a white ceiling, but I I did this ceiling to match. So, so this would be the corridor in the Eagle, just like this is the corridor in the Eagle. And this corridor has this style of ceiling. So I did the same ceiling over here. So that's how I modeled that storage container purely based off this one photograph. Sorry, storage room as uh, based on this one photograph here. Um, I have seen the storage room with the um, moon buggy sitting in there as well, which is just a crazy idea. So turn the screenshots off. One last look. And now let's have a, the, the two launch pads are totally un, unchanged. And let's have a look at the interactive diorama. The uh, moon buggy is unchanged. All of this stuff is unchanged from previously. And so over here, we have the new uh, variant of the passenger pod. And so we have, we now have four of these green buttons. The first one is main mission, unchanged. The second one is the corridors, unchanged from previously. The passenger pod has been changed in the sense that I removed the storage room from the uh, Eagle passenger pod scene. But other, other than that, it's pretty much unchanged. Yeah, yeah, there's no, there are no changes, you know, except for that texture that I've already mentioned. So that's the passenger pod diorama. And then we have the X5 pod plus cockpit diorama. Now, <laughs> let's just go to that. Um, this says cockpit diorama because originally my plan, as I said before, my original plan was to include the computer wall with all of the new props and so on, plus the cockpit. Now the cockpit was taking me way too long and there's still questions about dimensions and proportions and stuff. So I'm releasing this update without the cockpit. But since I had already done some basic work on this diorama thing, I just left it in. Uh, and as you can see, there's unfinished work, a lot of unfinished work there. Um, but, you know, here we can see our little fire extinguisher down there with all of those labels. You can see the, the different screen configuration along with the, uh, the rail that holds the stun guns. And the computer wall with a matching animation in the screen. And I've got no containers sitting in the storage room either in this diorama. But the doors are animated, so if we look down there, we can see the doors slowly opening and closing. And so we've got door number two, number three, four, five. It's so kind of an ugly five. And then that's going to be six and seven for the um, cockpit door. And you can see here in the cockpit, I've got three architraves and two doors. But in the real set, I think it was just one door and two architraves. So that's the... Um, new addition there and then over here with these cases there's really just the addition of the what I'm calling the battery but could well well be anything something different and then this container here um, so I think th these just stacked on top of each other and you fill them up with different things but in the TV show it's like that so that's 
like that. And then we have our little battery thingy bob. Um, the writing here on um, where I've written lithium-ion 12 volt battery, there is some writing there. Couldn't see what it was; just way too blurry. Um, but if I'm wrong about it being a battery, I'm happy to change that. Okay. Oops. Oh, I've lost it. So if we go to our menu and then if I reset. There it is. <laughs> I was trying to throw that in there. Okay, so that's that's it for today's update. Uh, for the next update, I really do hope to do the Eagle cockpit. And beyond that, who knows? So thank you very much and see you next time.